I give the writers a lot of credit for that arc. I give them all the credit for that arc because in each movie they've been able to tap into a different part of of Gru's character and Lucy's character to kind of examine, without getting too heavy with it, examine the the themes of family and relationships and love and uh, commitment. Um, so I think all of those things feel very real. And, and the fact that this guy started in one place and these children really changed his life and changed who he was intrinsically. And since then we've seen him kind of fight against himself in becoming this better person. So I think there's a really nice moral to it all. One of the first clips that I saw of this film was a scene where Gru and Lucy are talking to each other and, and baby Gru is there and responding so beautifully to Lucy and could not be less interested and is antagonistic of Gru. And it's, again, it's such a, um, it's such a beautiful animation because the timing of it is is kind of impeccable. It's hard it's hard to time things comedically so well as a you know in real life, let alone do it in a film. And and the the writers, editors, animators did such a perfect job. Yes, Gru Jr. is a chip off the old block, but uh, boy, he does not like the old block to start with. Maxime definitely carries a grudge. Uh, as you'll see in the movie, there was a tipping point in their youth and the kind of the, the seeds of why Maxime hates Gru so much. And it seems very innocuous, but it just teaches us a lesson that even the most innocuous things can really affect a person down the road. And it certainly has done that with Maxime. Poppy does a little investigating and figures out that Gru is not in fact Chet Cunningham, his alias but that it grew, Felonius grew, the you know, villainous mastermind. And she wants to be a villain too. Um, so she manipulates him into pulling off a heist and, uh, because she wants to be a villain, just like him. And so they become unlikely partners. I was so happy to do Miss Hattie in the first one and just kind of assumed that since they adopted the girls that I wouldn't be in the other ones. So the fact that they asked me to come back and be a different character for the next three, I'm, it's one of my favorite things I've ever done. I love being a part of it. I think I'm just sort of turning up my personality to like 50 <laughs> and <laughs> with a little bit of, um, I don't know, Lucy's kind of, she's different than me, but it's fun to slip into someone who's so energetic and positive um, and who loves her husband so much and he's so, she's so supportive of Gru. Um, it's, it's easy to slip in in that it's, she's so fun to do and I, I enjoy playing her so much. People really love the films and I think it's something that Adults love taking children to. I mean, teenagers love it. It's kind of for everybody. And there's always a story about family and heart and love. And there's also a, always a hilarious villain and crime. And the writing is just so good. And it's just, it's so fun to watch. It does feel like yesterday the first one came out and me and my friends were impersonating Vector and, and just cracking up about it. But I think why it has this loyal audience is, first of all, it's so lovable. It's so well written. It's so well directed. Everything about it is just, you just love it so much. But also, I do think that the humor, when you're a little kid, you're laughing so hard. And then when you get older and you watch the second one and you watch the third one, you realize that the humor that works for the kids also works for the adults. There's so much hidden smart humor in there. Um, and so watching them as I've gotten older, I've only enjoyed them more because I'm understanding some of these jokes that I didn't understand when I was a kid, but I was still laughing my head off because it was still funny to me. So I think that is part of the secret sauce of why I personally have been a loyal fan for 16 years. 
She's so like casually sinister. Like she is like, you can't help but love her when you first meet her too. Cause, because she has this just bright happiness about her yet the lines she's delivering, the things she's saying are so like evil. Um, and I really love that about her. So Poppy is a very clever girl. Uh, she's got these new neighbors that move into her quiet, lovely town. Um, but she, being a supervillain fan and a, you know, hope she's hoping to be a supervillain one day, she recognizes Gru immediately and places his identity and threatens his witness protection program with his family um, because she wants him to help her become the biggest supervillain of all. Um, and she's got these big dreams and big aspirations. But just like Gru, who is our favorite supervillain, she's got a really big heart. And she cracks me up. She gets into a lot of different kinds of trouble. And she stresses Gru out so much. He is so afraid of her and stressed out by her, which I find so funny. Um, and she knows it. And it makes her, she, she finds so much joy in, in giving Gru anxiety. <laughs> So Gru's life has changed a lot over the course of all the films, but this movie, his life has maybe changed the most because now he has baby Gru. <laughs> and having this baby in the picture that doesn't really find him very funny or impressive <laughs> is probably his biggest challenge in this movie. Getting to actually be married now and have a baby, I think that's a whole new level. The Mega Minions are crazy in this movie. There are five different ones. There's the flying one, um, one that has one giant laser eye. Um, there's one that's super stretchy. There's one that's insanely strong. And then my favorite one is made out of rocks. And I'm not really sure what he does exactly, but he's indestructible. I was so excited when I found out that Will Ferrell was the new villain in this movie because I am such a huge fan of Will Ferrell. Um, so that's just insane. And then Sofia Vergara, I watched every episode of Modern Family, so that's completely awesome. And then um, Joey King, I think is like an amazing actress. We played around with a couple of different voices at first, uh, but that is ultimately the one that we landed on. And, and that was in the initial pitch to me that uh, Maxime would be this French bad guy. <laughs> and I don't know why that would make me laugh or anyone laugh, but <laughs> it works. And, uh, and, I, and I thought, well, I've, I've never done that before. Uh, and so we, uh, um, we played around with that voice and, and ultimately we're like, yeah, that's the, that's the right tone, uh, and, and that allows Maxime to have a certain amount of menace to him. At the same time, it's perfectly silly to fit the tone of the movie. Maxime's girlfriend, Valentina, is, uh, I think Maxime knows that he's kind of with someone who's way above his pay grade. Uh, in terms of sophistication and looks, and um, and I think he, he he's constantly annoyed that she's questioning his plans, and uh, and wisely sh so she's like she's always pointing out like is this the best way we should be doing this? But he's kind of governed by impulse, and he has lack of impulse control, and um, uh, and his. His thoughts of revenge are overpowering any sort of rational thinking he might have. I think one of the, the most uh, amazing things about the movie is that it's about family and how tight they, are, they all are, the sacrifices they make for each other, um, how they, you know, even though they're like uh, superheroes or kind of like superheroes or um, bad guys, they care so much about their their family, you know, bonds, and that's a beautiful uh, story for everyone to watch. It was amazing to work with all the guys because, you know, they're all so professional and they all were so, like, invested in this movie. They knew every little, you know, detail that they wanted. It was it was really nice, you know, to be directed by someone that 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 it's in love with what they're creating.
It's amazing, and more when it's joy and happiness, you know, to kids and families. This is a movie that you can watch together with your kids, which is something really special. I mean, the adults are not going to get bored watching the movie. Um, it's amazing. I think uh, entertainment can bring, you know, people and, and families together. I mean, they just have everything. I like that they're hilarious and that adults and kids like them. I think that's sort of like my favorite genre in general, you know, where like my little nieces and nephews can enjoy something just like I can also. I already got to see what Patsy looked like and got to kind of use my imagination of like what voice would embody this like preppy tennis woman. Um, but it really was exploring in the rehearsal process. Like I think at one point it was like, what if it was like a Jennifer Coolidge's cousin or Reese Witherspoon and then, you know, a preppy snobby and then sort of found the Southern voice in that. Patsy is friendly and kind-hearted and sort of oblivious to social norms and just so excited to, oh, come over here, let's go do this, and sort of all over the place. Um, but certainly somebody who I think makes you feel comfortable and at home, um, and certainly someone I would want to meet at a country club. Part of what we wanted to establish at the beginning with Gru and his family was sort of domestic bliss because what we wanted to do is shatter that <laughs> um, as he, you know, uh, his uh, old high school rival and, now, and the new villain of this uh, storyline is in pursuit of Gru and his family. So that's one of the things is setting up the story is really making it seem like Gru, except that maybe he's got <clears throat> a little bit of a contentious thing with his um, new son, but really for him, he's got this like idyllic life. Um, and so he's, you know, he's, you know, just feels very safe and comfortable and of course, we pull that rug out from under him, and that forms the basis of our story. Kristen is the best. I mean, she's such a, we've been so lucky to have her as part of, really, actually, since the first film, she played Miss Hattie, the, the, who ran the orphanage, and then, of course, was Lucy as of Despicable Me Too. Yeah, and she's incredible, and she always brings little, you know, bits of color and texture to any line she does that makes it that much better. It's interesting because there's so much superhero material out there, and a lot of it is comedic. Um, is like was trying to find what's our version of it um, because um, again, there's been a lot of good stuff that's been done. So like with the minion characters specifically, what can they do that maybe we haven't seen before? So that was that was where we investigated, and of course, you know, by the third act, it, it goes completely nuts. Uh, where we're relying less on their superpowers and more just on the goofiness of them being minions. With this film, we started with this idea um, about Gru having a baby son. And then we realized that there was a huge opportunity in Gru being so enamored with his son, so different with his son than he is, than his gruff persona with everybody else that when he expresses that love for his son, that it's actually his baby son who rebuffs him. In DM4, we explore a rivalry between Gru and a villain named Maxime Lamal. Maxime Lamal is voiced by Will Ferrell. And we haven't seen Carell and Ferrell in a movie together since Anchorman and its sequel and it's great to see them squaring off with one another. Now this is a rivalry that's gone back to their high school days. Their high school days when they were both attending a school for villainy. The Mega Minions are delightful to watch, not because of their powers, but because of their flaws. Um, you know, no matter how high their aspirations are, they always manage to screw up. And it's in watching those screw ups that we get so much joy. Every time we aim to bring a level of, of joy, um, we, we aim to bring laughter to our audiences. Uh, and, um, uh, and it's something that we, we take tremendous pride in. Um, and we are unbelievably appreciative for, um, for the loyalty 
that our fans have had to us over this, you know, 15 year period. So in this film, we've got Gru and the family moving into the witness protection program, which puts them undercover, which we thought would be great. We would love to see Gru have to not be Gru. And we were really excited about this idea of him having to blend in to the, to the neighborhood that he's been put in. And so Gru can't wear his black and be nasty and mean. He has to wear his pink polo shirt and be a guy who wants to go to the country club and be the dad who drops the kids off at school. And we just thought we love Gru in uncomfortable positions. So we thought this would be the most uncomfortable we can make Gru. And that always ends up fun. Gru goes to his high school reunion to arrest the villain Maxime Lamal. Maxime Lamal was an old high school rival of Gru's. And we see that Maxime is out to get Gru because he really has never let go of that conflict they had in high school. He is driven by the rivalry he had with, with Gru in high school, and even before high school. <laughs> you know, We get the sense that these two have grown up together and that they do not get along. And, and Maxime has never let go of that. Steve Carell is the greatest human on the planet. I love working with him. It is a treat every time, and he is so good at what he does. He leaves nothing on the floor here. <laughs> he, he just goes for it every single time. He gives it his all every time, and to watch him come back years after you know, we've done this. He'll come back two years later, and when I tell you the first line is dead on, he's got that voice dialed in in his head. I think that voice just lives in his head now, um, which makes sense. He's been doing it for quite a while. But it is just so much fun watching Steve do his thing. And he's also so knowledgeable of the character, and he will not hold back. If he feels like Gru might not say that, he will let us know, and he's always right. He is always right. He really knows who Gru is 